I survived 100 days in the Ultimate Fantasy Mod Pack. Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons is a massive mod pack that turns Minecraft into a brutal RPG. In these 100 days, my goals are simple. I want to take down the Wither and the Ender Dragon, both actions which actually increase the game's difficulty. And last but not least, I want to take down a Tier 5 Dragon as well. I spawned into the world with a necklace and a cactus sword. Really quickly, I decided to uh, check these quests out and found these things called specializations. I chose the mining one since it gave some really good rewards. Then while grabbing some coal, I noticed that I was getting a bunch of XP for some skills. I had more important things to do first though, and that was just getting stone tools. While exploring around, I grabbed more coal and went into this cave. But it was way too risky for now, so I just grabbed whatever I could and made my way back out. I then realized I unlocked so many quest rewards, and some skills ended up being leveled up. Since I already had a bunch of stone, I decided to make a pack cell as well. Across the hill, I noticed a village where I grabbed a bunch of hay bales to make tons of bread. I also entered this scribes building where I grabbed the bookshelves and some of these manuscripts. For those items, I got this uh, experience gem as a quest reward. For mod packs like these, I always try to get a backpack quickly, so I made sure to breed these cows. I ended up taking a cow out, but I got no leather. After that, I decided to grab even more quest rewards and now my inventory was already filled. Once that was done, I found a smoker and here I cooked this raw beef. Then after that, I found an even bigger animal pen. Over here, I bred even more animals and finally got two leather. Later that night, I cooked more raw beef and then got attacked by vexes, so I made sure to run away and sleep. The next morning, I picked up these buddy card things, which are going to be important for much later. And I went to explore that place where I got attacked. I broke into the center and made my way up these staircases. The chest up here had a bunch of tomes, which gave me a lot of levels. I also had some recall potions and a golden apple. While exploring the village a little more, I grabbed an iron ore and picked up this quest reward for the buddy card. That ended up giving me a pretty cool knife, which I couldn't use yet. In the meantime, some more cows grew and I ended up getting some more leather from them. Another quest reward gave me this randomite ore which dropped a slime ball. But it did level up my mining skill though. While I was there, I smelted this iron ore and unlocked even more quest rewards. Here I learned that I could make flint tools and they were so much better than the stone ones I had for now. After all of that, I went down to this cave I saw right underneath the village. I started off by lighting this place up and then I realized I had this uh, night vision potion. With that, I grabbed 22 iron ores and found out I was on top of a zombie dungeon. I didn't jump down just yet. Instead, I lit up more of the areas up top and grabbed as many of the other ores I saw. While the iron was cooking, I was trying to level up my combat by hitting these zombies. I basically just stood two blocks above these zombies and hit them until I got up to combat level 15. Turns out for an iron sword, I needed level 25 combat. Day 3, I got my combat up to level 13, grabbed some more quest rewards, and found another direction to access this zombie dungeon. I was able to break one spawner, but I had to retreat since some of these enhanced zombies could just one shot me. I used this water bucket to push a bunch of zombies off and then start exploring the rest of this dungeon. Right now, I only broke a few spawners and looted a few chests. Uh, then I decided to make my way up and here tons of zombies decided to just spawn at once. Luckily, before I ended up dying, I drank this recall potion. While running around, I grabbed more quest rewards and then I had a choice between which skills to level up. I chose endurance and this helped like crazy. As I was exploring some more, I found a swamp where I picked up a slime nest and still couldn't find any strings. It turned dark, so I had to use my recall potion real quick. When I came back to the village, I found a chest in that one structure that I ended up missing. I also got hit by a vex and had to recover. But I did manage to get the magic mirror and some recall potions that were inside the chest. And now I had more than enough strings to make the backpack. On top of that, I also upgraded it to iron. This ended up clearing so much space and I went to sleep. Day 4 to 5, I found this dirt house which had a trap door inside. This ended up leading to a basement with a zombie villager. I realized I could just farm endurance here, so I basically just let this zombie hit me a bunch and then heal. I did that on repeat for a long time and I even grabbed a bunch of quest rewards to increase my endurance as well. Lucky for me, I had tons of food so the healing was no issue at all. This entire process got me up to level 15 on endurance which means I could wear iron armor. I made sure to grab the quest rewards, cure the zombie villager, and then take the brewing stand as well. As it was getting dark, I decided to kill a few sheep to make a sleeping bag plus a bow. With that done, I picked a direction to explore and slept midway through the night. In the morning, I found this house structure where I grabbed the bookshelves and all the loot from upstairs. This place also unlocked some more quest rewards and of course I chose the XP for my combat skill. 
Oh yeah, so in this mod pack, you also get a bunch of these weird little coins, which you can use to buy waystones, but I wasted 200 coins on a loot crate and got a useless helmet. As I kept moving on, I unlocked more quests, meeting and defeating these different mobs. I also grabbed some glowstone and then these blue skies portal blocks. After that, I found a bunch of gravel and learned that you could use this cutting board to extract flint. I ended up doing that so I could craft a flint paxel. To end this day, I used up more coins for another loot chest, which was still a waste, and then recalled back to the village to sleep. Before going out to explore in a whole different direction, I decided to check out that cave under the village again. In here, I immediately fought an enchanted zombie and accidentally used up 30 levels to advance this specialization. I just needed four more levels on my mining stat, at least. While fighting off these zombies, I got my combat up to level 20. I still had to be careful though, but now I was able to get much deeper into the zombie dungeon. I ended up leveling up my mining ability a lot by breaking these spawners. After going around a good bit of this dungeon, I almost got surrounded by zombies. Luckily, I was able to fend them all off. The chests in here though were not good at all, they all just had like really basic loot. I did however get 9 gold, which meant I could upgrade my iron backpack to gold. This dungeon connected to another cave, which I slowly built down to get to. I grabbed all the ores I could and especially these source ores. Then while mining everything I could, I fell into another cave, and here I saw diamond ores, and these randomite ores as well. The randomite ores gave me a diamond and tons of mining XP. Finally, after all of that, I got my mining up to level 10 and unlocked tier 2 specialization. This gave me a new armor and a trinket which was supposed to increase my mining speed. These caves were also pretty big, so I spent a good amount of time just going around lighting the areas up, and of course grabbing the ores at my level. All the stuff got my mining up to level 14. I also had tons of iron ore and as soon as my mining got up to level 15, I set up furnaces to smelt a bunch of them. Turns out, uh, mining wasn't the stat I needed to get up to level 15, it was gathering. But I was close on that anyway. Since things were smelting, I explored some more and a creeper explosion scared me, so I came back to restock. I made a bunch of iron blocks and extra stone pickaxes then went right back. Turns out there was another cave which had this monster box. I ended up getting too close and spawned all these mobs and after fighting for a little bit I had to retreat. Once things cleared out I finally got my gathering to 15 and switched to the iron pickaxe. I was finally able to mine these diamonds now. Then for some reason I decided to get all the way up to an iron bow without even leveling up my archery at first. The next day I waited for a good chunk of iron ore to smelt and made an iron paxel. Then I started making my way back to the surface. And along the way I made sure to grab as much diamond and gold ores as I could though. I actually ended up back in that zombie dungeon where an elite zombie spawned and chased me. I had to find something really quick to jump on so I wouldn't die. After surviving, it was my cue to get out of there, and as soon as I surfaced, I grabbed these bookshelves from this house and just picked a direction to go. This way led me to another dungeon, and after clearing out the top floor, I just decided to leave and sleep. As soon as morning hit, I saw this battle tower. I climbed the stairs up and broke the spawner here. The top floor had blocks of iron and gold, which was really awesome. There was also an illager tower here too, but I wanted to live, so I made my way up this hill on the other side. Over here, I found this mad cow and killed a pegasus because I thought they would drop leather. That's not all though, I opened a haunted chest and took out the ghost. Then I probably found the biggest jungle biome I had ever seen. I basically got stuck here, so I had to drink the recall potion. Since I broke the bed before, this ended up uh, bringing me back to the first place I spawned in. That night, I tried to make my way around the forest biome, so I was very carefully on a boat. I even ended up finding this underground water dungeon, and I really didn't want to get hit by drowns, so I made sure to run far away and slept. Day 9, I was still on the search to find a nice area to live, but first I had to survive this attack from these trident throwing drowns. Once those guys burned up, I found a roguelike dungeon and started going down these stairs. It started off pretty easy and I was able to go through this uh, first floor, breaking the spawners and looting the chests. I found ender pearls, golden apples, enchanted books, and enchanted gears just from one floor. I picked up some quest rewards and even uh, found this trap which I disarmed. This left all the ores to me and since they were pretty rare, my mining leveled up like crazy. The next floor though was immediately more dangerous. I was already getting hit by more stacked mobs. I was in serious trouble so I had to run away. Day 10 to 11, I found a great spot to start a base behind the previous dungeon. I started by clearing the grass and placed down the essential. Then 
I used one of these copper coins for a loot box that gave me 16 dirt blocks. After that, I chopped down a tree and grabbed some more quest rewards. While my iron was smelting, I made tons of fences to outline a farm. It was just a basic farm for wheat to start. I also had good amounts of bone meal, so I was able to stock up on bread. Once that was done, I quickly went to sleep. As soon as morning hit, I placed down a good amount of chests and started clearing my backpack out. Since I had so much iron, I also put down an anvil as well. Next up, with these coins, I finally bought a waystone. That was the last thing I basically needed to make this place home. Really quickly, I checked off a bunch of basic quests. Then as I checked the surrounding area, I noticed a giant castle. It took me a bit to find the entrance and I heard a bunch of mobs somewhere. This place was pretty abandoned though. I uh, made my way towards the top where I looted tons of books and maps. It turns out though, all the good loot was in the center. I ended up getting blocks of gold and some diamond gear. While searching for the mob noises, I woke up tons of silverfish and just had to fight all these little guys. Then after all that, I finally found where the mobs had been piling up and started to take a few of these guys out. Once the area was clear, I hopped in but there were more mobs coming from the basement, so I drank my recall potion to come back to the base. Since I had gathered 5 obsidian, I was also able to make an enchantment table. After that, I leveled up my endurance through a quest reward as well. Right next to the farm, I placed an enchantment table down, and because I had collected tons of books, I had this place up and running in no time. Before the night ended, I made this worn notebook so that I could start Ars Nouveau. With all that done, I enchanted my pickaxes and got efficiency on both. Then for the sword, I got smite 3. I also enchanted my armor and got protection 3 on my chest plate, feather falling 4 on my boots, and useless things on the rest. After that, I grabbed this potion that had night vision and went down a cave next to my base. As I was digging down, I ended up in a much bigger and more dangerous area. This was another roguelike dungeon and I was fighting tons of zombies. Oh yeah, I also bought this uh, warp scroll from the coin shop just in case. I ended up clearing the first floor and uh, one of the chests had a copper coin that I traded for some leather. Another copper coin ended up giving me a stack of carrots. I then ended up actually drinking this potion, which uh, I wish I saved, but now I had full night vision and tons of other buffs. With that, I breezed through more rooms and started moving down. Last time, this level gave me tons of trouble, but this time I was able to clear out all the spawners. I even got some quest reward for breaking 25 spawners. I used it on combat, which was a mistake, but the other reward was this monster coin. This was the second last level and the loot was getting so much better. These chests now had ender pearls and diamond armor. In the meantime, I actually ended up using that monster coin for endurance levels. Once again, I picked up some potion with night vision and went down to the final level. Now this level has tons of loot, but it also has way stronger enemies. I started off by fighting a few zombies and then got attacked by a wither skeleton. It was pretty much worth it since the loot in here was really good. Things were getting a little too easy, so I quickly got humbled by a few strays. I ended up running and having to eat a golden apple. After that, I ended up coming home. As soon as I got back, I combined two iron chest plates and made these iron clawed gauntlets, which allows your hand to break all types of blocks. Later that night, I grabbed almost everything for a feeding upgrade, but I just needed these melons. So I teleported back to that first village I was in. I ended up not getting any melons, but I did pick up tons of wheat and a composter. Once it was morning, I enchanted another pair of boots and grabbed some stone. With that, I made a grindstone and re-enchanted a bunch of stuff. I also combined two swords together to get one decent sword. Uh, I did the same with these boots as well. After that, I made a regular bow that I could actually use and went back to the castle I was in before. This time, I went down to the basement and cleared out this whole section. First by breaking all the spawners and then looting all the chests. Turns out there was another room and it was filled with skeletons who were way more annoying. In the chests, I got an enchanted golden apple and more diamonds. Turns out there was another room connected to this room as well. Doing all of this leveled me up like crazy and I managed to break into another room which was actually a library. On the way back to the base, I used my bow to level up the archery skill. I also enchanted more leggings and helmets and then combined those together. The leggings actually increased my total hearts. After that, I got really lucky with this pickaxe enchantment. Day 15 to 16, I traveled back towards the first village I explored and went down towards the snowy tundra area. I made sure to check off all these quests as well. After that, I noticed this giant and started firing arrows at it. It ended up dropping its own head. Past that, I ran into a village and just started looting this place. I picked up a blast furnace in here, activated the waystone, and went inside this icy pyramid as well. This actually dropped me right into a mine shaft. Luckily, the first chest had torches which allowed me to explore pretty safely. 
Some of the chests in here were pretty nice. I ended up getting some relics and random ores. As I got deeper, I got more quest rewards from killing mobs and I was able to level up my endurance. After that, I took out this shade and stumbled into a large dungeon area. This place had three rooms, each with a few spawners. I was pretty careful, but I ended up almost getting overrun anyway. Uh, I ended up having to eat my golden apple and after that, it was so much easier to take these mobs out and break the spawners. The chests in here were definitely not worth it. Uh, before clearing the next room, I actually leveled up my magic. This room was a lot easier, but I don't think it had anything in the chests. The final room actually ended up having a monster box. I ended up having to retreat because there were so many mobs, but after that, I took them out pretty easily. Uh, those chests also had nothing, and on the way out, I found a zombie dungeon. This place had zombie brutes, and I picked up a second magic mirror here. Then I grabbed this randomite ore and picked up these sunglasses, uh, which become very important much later. I ended up taking a little bit longer and ran through a whole nother sword, but I cleared the dungeon and used the mirror to come back home. After that, I used another quest reward to get endurance level 30. Rest of the night, I made two more double chests, set a blast furnace down, and cleared my backpack, which took a very long time. The next morning, I saw that I had 64 raw beef from one of those copper coin rewards and ended up cooking those. Then I used these bottles of XP and also bought a warp stone. Once that was done, I made extra iron armor and rolled some enchants on those. After some combining and swapping, things were looking pretty good. I also made this smithing table, but I had no clue how to salvage items. I did figure out how to reforge things though. The reforging definitely was not worth it. Next up, for quest rewards, I made a watering can, which actually grew my crops a lot quicker. And then I made a tower shield and used a campfire for a bunch of endurance XP. I also inputted these bones to get more XP for endurance as well. Before this night ended, I stocked my backpack with bee cages and all the items needed for a feeding upgrade. As soon as morning hit, I used most of my diamonds to upgrade my backpack. Then I used these two clay balls to make marvelous clay. With all that, I crafted a novice spell book, but I was about two levels short from being able to use it. Since I really wanted to get into Ars Nouveau, I also made this scribes table. But for that, I had to run around uh, to find these flourishing archwood logs. Day 19, it was time to go back and look for melons. Along the way, I fought these pillagers and realized I had permanent strength. This was because of the different foods I'd eaten and the spice of life mod. I ended up finding this jungle biome and there were just melons out and around, which I collected. While exploring the rest of the jungle, I found some cool looking mobs like this uh, Amphitheer, which I took out. I also found this witch's tower where I grabbed the potions, defeated the witch, and looted through all the chests. I made sure to grab the extra enchanting table and the bookshelves. Right past this tower, I went inside a jungle pyramid and broke this glass, which just triggered the TNT trap, so I had to get out of there. I ended up staying on the outskirts of the jungle biome and took out more pillagers, and once it became night, I made my way back home. As soon as I was back, I also crafted these arcane stone and smelt the glass to make source jars. I was able to craft two source jars and an agronomic source link. I waterlogged this stone slab and placed the source link on top. Then I put the source jars on the sides for now. With this watering can, I sped up growth and the source link were filling up my jars really quickly. To explore some more, I traveled back towards the villages. As morning hit, I ran through this swamp biome and found a house. In here, I grabbed the bookshelves and broke the urns, which dropped a blaze powder. On the way out, I fought a crocodile, and as I moved forward, I stumbled into a library. I made sure to activate the waystone and looted the chests inside. The loot here wasn't that good, but I still made my way to the top and took out these witches. Before leaving, I grabbed this magical brazier as well, and then just kept moving forward. Finally, after all of that, I actually found regular bees who I captured. Past those bees, I ended up finding another village, and while looting some of these chests, I got a really cool trophy. In that village, there was this tower that I recognized, so I decided to climb up. One of the chests had even more sunglasses and these buddy cards, so collecting a whole set of these things gives you permanent speed. I ended up fighting tons of zombies and found out I had an enchantment that fired snowballs. The chests in the center were pretty good. It had a bunch of tomes. I also opened up those buddy packs and they filled my inventory up. Then this enchanted mob almost killed me so I had to teleport back home. While putting all the loot away, I made this buddy card binder for all the cards and finally made the feeding upgrade and that ended up clearing out my inventory a lot. Day 21, I placed a bunch more dirt down, cleared even more space and made this farm a true 9x9 farm. I also placed the source jars on top of the source link to save space. Also, those copper coins gave me a stack of carrots, so I did a half wheat, half carrot farm as well. After that, I placed the fences down and moved the bed. Then I needed to make this thing called a glyph press. 
The only thing I actually needed to get was more stone. So I decided to explore this cave right underneath my base. While mining, my goal was also to mine a bunch of source ores to level up my magic. Even then, I also managed to grab whatever else I could too to level up my mining. Once all that was done, I made the glyph press and put it right behind the source jars. Then before the night ended, I made an iron paxel. Day 22, with this paxel, I chopped down tons of trees and made four magic clay. Uh, I put one clay plus a diamond to make an amplified glyph. I used another magic clay plus rabbit hide to make the launch glyph. And with these two, I crafted a spell to launch myself. Once that was done, I made another glyph for leap and also added that onto the main spell. Then to help with this food diversity stuff, I made a lunchbox and upgraded it to gold. Inside the lunchbox, I could pick 14 different types of food, uh, which would all increase my food diversity and give me tons of boosts. I decided to make an advanced feeding upgrade also, and then allow this lunchbox. I actually learned this tip from a YouTuber named Dio Legion, so make sure you check out their video as well. I spent the rest of the day making another glyph for Mage Light. This one was just like placing torches. Then I moved all of my random foods into the lunchbox and went down to the caves underneath my base to light up as much as I could. Day 23, I came back to grab tons of torches and then went down to explore the rest of the cave. Immediately, I fought a bunch of mobs and ended up in a zombie dungeon. The chest though had a cobalt shield. I then tried to level up my endurance from this zombie brute, but it did way too much damage. The chest in here had way more buddy cards and other random stuff too. Past this dungeon, I got way too close to another monster box and had to fight tons of random dudes. After some tactical retreating, I cleared them all out. As I explored more of the cave, I found something cool. I didn't realize that this was a nether portal, but I did read something and I remember to take this dimensional plasma in a bucket. After that, I decided to come back home and clear my backpack. The next morning, I went back to the library and found another empty house. In here, I broke the urns and got more blaze powder. As I kept moving forward, I found another roguelike dungeon and started going down the stairs. I managed to run through the first floor pretty easily. I grabbed everything I could from the chests and broke all the spawners. The second floor though was pretty terrifying since I ended up in a boss chamber. I had to run away and I grabbed these logs to create some separation. With that I easily took the dude out and picked up its nice helmet. After that I cleared the other rooms plus the boss chamber and then went down to the next floor. Here I fought elite skeletons who were pretty tanky. I also got an iron coin which I used on three randomite ores. Then I moved on to another floor and realized that this was uh, connected to a zombie dungeon and a mine shaft. There were so many chests to loot and I ended up getting even more tomes buddy cards and diamonds. Once that was done, I went back to the roguelike dungeon and tried to loot everything in here as well. Doing all of that, I got my combat up to level 40. Once I looted everything, I explored the surrounding cave, which uh, was connected to another dungeon that I hadn't seen yet, but I was getting surrounded by these mobs first. Once I dealt with all of them, I looted the chest and I got this balloon bobble, which increases jump height and reduces fall damage. Since I explored a bunch, I came home, used my quest rewards on endurance, put all of my buddy cards away, and then used all of my copper coins on loot boxes. Later that night, I almost died to some zombies, and once I took care of them, I made a bunch more chests and used this monster coin on magic levels. With level 5 magic, I could now use a spell book, and the first thing I did was sprinkle mage light all over the base. Once that was done, I tested out this launch spell and it was working pretty well. Finally, to end this night off, I equipped new armor and kept testing this launch spell for fun. Day 26, I enchanted some of the new armor and teleported back towards the villages to explore. This launch spell and balloon combo was pretty awesome since it reduced the fall damage I had to take. Don't worry, later on, I get rid of all fall damage. After exploring around some more, I found this ice woodland mansion structure. Right away, I went to the top floor and fought a Vindicator. Behind that dude was an Evoker and of course these stupid Vexes. As soon as those guys were taken care of, I equipped the totem and made sure to just launch these projectile torches as much as I could. Doing that, I was able to go from room to room clearing it all out. I also grabbed a ton of books from one room and apparently I had reached 200 total levels. Once I made it down to the lower floors, I fought this elite vindicator which took half of my hearts every hit. It actually ended up taking me a long time to take that guy out. The mansion overall sucked though since I didn't get anything good aside from the totems. The rest of the night, I fought through this pillager tower and took my quest rewards which I used all in my endurance. Then I fought mobs in this prairie biome until the morning. After fighting these harpies, I launched myself past these mountains and saw a giant structure. This place was filled with these mining mobs. I grabbed more levels for endurance from a quest reward and jumped up to see how many mobs there were. This place was absolutely packed and while lighting some of these areas, all the mobs started climbing towards me. 
I tried jumping to this structure, but I had to retreat since I almost died. Then after eating a golden apple, I jumped to the top floor and started looting the chests here. Turns out the strongest mobs were on the top floor, but I was able to handle them pretty easily. I almost died again, so I quickly made a harm spell and tried again. This actually ended up working and I cleared out the top floor. This chest in here were really stacked. They had tons of ores, enchanted gear, and food. Clearing the floor below was significantly harder, so I had to build down and then launch those projectile torches again. Doing all of that, I took out all the mobs from above. I also picked up the pumpkins in here, which I actually needed. The next two floors I did the exact same thing and picked up whatever I could from the chests. Once morning hit, I cleared this place out and my backpack was filling up. I decided to move on and ended up in this rundown house where I killed this pixie for pixie dust. Oh yeah, since I had a potato, I also made this uh, spice of life book and looked at all the buffs I could get for the food diversity. While exploring some more, I found this house where I got some more buddy cards and swapped some of my armor for the ones in here. I also activated the waystone outside and then once again after leaping around I found the exact same structure. So I did the same thing and looted the entire place then just came home. I immediately enchanted this new armor and for the helmet I got mana boost and projectile protection and then for the chest plate I got protection and unbreaking. I spent the entire night basically putting all the stuff I had collected away. I even filled out my buddy card binder and made a scarecrow. I put the scarecrow right in front of the source link. Day 29 I needed to make a much better storage area so I started by grabbing tons a stone. I had silk touch which made the job significantly easier. With that, I could make these network cables and this guidebook for a quest reward. To make the storage network root, I needed 4 quartz blocks, which meant I had to go to the nether. Since I didn't know how to go to the nether just yet, I actually tried making a nether portal and uh, there was this lava pool right next to my house and after messing up a few times, I got the shape of the portal up. I used a flint and steel and even tried using this dimensional plasma, but none of those things were working. After some slight reading, I went back underground to that nether portal area. So I had no clue how to get back home, but I still hopped in the portal anyway. I ended up spawning really high up in a soul sand valley and I used one of these huge basalt pillars to come down. After that, I actually beat a ghast with my spells and purchased a waystone. While I was exploring, I noticed these weird structures on the ground and turns out that's how you come back home, but I didn't know about that just yet. Instead, I grabbed these gold blocks and launched myself onto a bastion. I really didn't want to fight those piglins, so I made sure to launch myself back towards a crimson forest biome. In here, I fought a crimson mosquito and finally grabbed the quartz I needed. Throughout this whole time, I kept fighting more mosquitoes and I even found some glowstone as well. I ended up hitting the mother load as I found myself in a quartz desert biome. In that biome, I got something like 70 quartz and then I fought all these piglins in this tower. My sword also broke, so I had to swap to an axe. During this time, I also decided to look for blazes. I actually ended up in this ember bog biome and fought a bunch of these guys. Even after taking out a ton of them, I only picked up like two blaze rods. I decided to call the quits though and started making my way back. I actually ended up getting pretty lucky and found a return portal with two gold blocks already in. With the two gold blocks I had, I was able to come back to the overworld. The first thing I did as soon as I came back was make the storage network route and I was able to upgrade my spell book to use tier 2 glyphs. Once that was done, I made two storage inventories and one storage request table. With all of that done, I crafted a few link cables and slept to get rid of the phantoms. Day 32 to day 33, I added some more dirt behind the chest and then dug down about four blocks to clear an area for the storage system. This area was about six blocks wide and then I made almost a stack of chests to place in there. These three layers of chests should be more than enough for now. I spent the rest of the time moving all of my items into these chests and then filling all the rows up. So with all that done, I linked all the chests together with the link cables and then connected it to the root with network cables. Once I set up the crafting grid and storage inventory, this thing was fully operational. In the morning, I made a storage remote, but I really needed this crafting one. That one was actually pretty expensive though. Now you guys let me know if this is cheating, but I turned on the land mode just to force load this one chunk my storage system was in. It also loaded a few extra chunks for some reason, but now I could access my storage from anywhere. To finish decorating, I cooked up sand and went to go look for squids. During my journey, I found a monastery and had a really rough time fighting those mobs. Then when I checked my map, I realized my base was pretty close to an ice dragon's nest. I slowly made my way back home without any squids, but I was able to make this glyph of slow fall instead, which meant my launch spell now didn't do any more fall damage. I ended this day by filling my storage area with glass and then getting my endurance to 40 
and my magic to 20. Day 34 to day 35, I grabbed this diamond sword that I had in my storage since my combat level is pretty close to 45. After that, I made new leggings and boots to go out exploring. With my launch spell, I breezed through these jungle biomes and fought these two giants. Finally, I ended up in another roguelike dungeon. Once again, the first floor was a cakewalk, and since I had that remote, I had no issues with inventory space. I even traded with this little goblin over here for iron coins that I used on randomite ores. I also mined them on the spot. The next floor also wasn't too hard, but my axe broke and I used my fist since my combat level was pretty close to 45. That actually ended up working surprisingly well, and I had this floor cleared too. Then the floor underneath was actually super hard to clear. But once I got my combat level 45, I put the diamond sword on. With that, I ran through the floor super easily and completed a quest for killing 100 zombies. I also explored the other rooms and completed another quest for breaking 50 spawners. But my armor was getting obliterated and there were way too many mobs, so I had to come back home. As soon as I came back home, I collected my quest rewards and grabbed levels for endurance. Once that was done, I also wanted to redeem all these coins I collected as well. Before I did that though, I placed these furnaces next to the root and used these cables to try and automate them. Not a single thing I did worked, so I just decided to redeem those coins. I accidentally submitted two of those monster coins for the 10 times reward, so those were all gone. The iron coins I just used on randomite ores. The next morning, I went towards that snow village and found an oceanographer. From that villager, I bought sea lanterns. Then I decided to use those copper coins on loot crates and squid ink. I set out to explore some more, but I had to make some armor first. During that trip, I also bought a loot crate and got a hunter's belt. After that, I found a tower which had some sick armor with affixes and the affix books as well. I came home and then after a little bit of research, I learned of a way to level up smithing. But more importantly, I actually looked at that Project MMO's XP bonuses tab to see what items boost what. I also enchanted the belt and went back to salvaging wooden swords since they turned back into sticks. Once I got up to smithing level 5, I graduated to stone swords. Before exploring again, I replaced this glass with black stained glass since it looked so much better and I made my way back towards that monastery. The chest in the front had like 11 obsidian which was huge for me, but I actually struggled a ton trying to take this elite skeleton out. The top floor though had a wilden defender, but that guy was pretty easy. After looting those chests, I wanted to go back to another structure as well. This place was some sort of drowned village and these mobs were crazy. I managed to take a few out and grab some sea lanterns and got really lucky also getting this uh, essence of undeath. So with that, I came home to make a grave and I used this knowledge of death thing to level up my scribe skill. I placed the grave down, made a crafting remote, and then uh, this grave would actually be the best way to disenchant items. Also to help with that, I made this Ankh of Prey and used it on the grave. Day 38 to day 39, I wanted to make my base look better, so I started off by making a path that connects to the important places. The enchantment area's floor was also replaced with stone bricks, and I randomized the path with stone bricks and cobblestone as well. That was already a pretty nice change, so I outlined my storage area as well with stone bricks. Once that was done, I made this glyph of break, but my gathering level was too low for now. With that being done, I teleported towards the library and started exploring. I grabbed a bunch of loot from this ruined portal and found another mage's tower. There were also these enchantment tomes in here, which I should have been using from the beginning. Anyways, I moved forward and explored another village which had those towers in the center. This place had an evoker and vexes, so after taking care of those guys, I looted the chests. The top floor chests weren't that good, but the bottom floor had a ton of those buddy card packs, which I of course opened and put into the binder. The next morning, I fought these Stymphalian birds and found this giant airship past this library. I grabbed a bunch of spruce planks and then managed to launch all the way up to the airship. Things were going pretty well as I broke a spawner and then I ended up getting stuck and what saved me was my magic mirror. I only had two hearts and I had to eat my golden apple. After that, I actually used this magma block to level up my endurance, but that wasn't working well at all. Instead, I made tomes of scrapping to strip a few enchantments. Since I needed gathering level 30, I decided to go down to the mines and grab everything I could. At first, things were going pretty well. I was able to grab tons of ores and even level up some skills. I also fought a monster's box, but as I went deeper into the cave, I fought another monster box, and this one was significantly harder, so I had to come back. 
That night, I made tons of spruce fences and went around the perimeter of my entire base area, placing it all down. I also lit up a good chunk of those areas with my spells and then put fence gates around as well. Now that my house is protected, I went out to try and grind more endurance levels. I jumped in this lava pool to get more XP and then noticed a cave so I actually hopped in there and started digging around. This cave was connected to much larger areas so I hopped in and started looking for very valuable ores. The rarer the ores, the more levels you actually get. That meant I basically just stayed under Y equals 15 and looked for diamond or randomite ores. I also ended up fighting another monster's box and had to uh, magic mirror out of there. That night, I ended up using this campfire and a zombie to grind even more levels. It carried over to the next morning when I learned that an iron shield increases your XP. So I did the campfire trick and while recovering health, I salvaged stone swords for smithing levels. I was getting pretty close and I even had a set of diamond armor ready. As it was turning into morning, I finally got up to level 45 endurance and enchanted my chest plate and leggings. The other diamond pieces I scrapped the enchants off of. Day 43 to day 44, I started off the day by making this glyph of extend time and then I learned that you could just salvage these books for levels. It also turns the book into paper but since I had so many books, it didn't even matter. I also made this night vision spell as well, which was just casting mage light on myself with tons of extend time. Then I ended up getting my smithing to level 14. Also I had 4 netherite scrap already, which I turned into one netherite ingot. Before going out to explore, I made a diamond scythe, which actually collects heads. And then I went underground to grab some stone. With the stone, I made an arcane pedestal for quest rewards and a ritual brazier, which I actually needed. Also now with night vision, I was able to go through this cave very easily. I got my gathering and mining up to level 29 as well. I fought through a monster box, looted a bunch of dungeons, and then decided to come home. As soon as I was back, I went out to look for vexing archwood logs. This actually took a uh, pretty decent amount of time to get, but with it, I was able to craft a tablet of scrying. To use that, I went back underground, placed the tablet on the brazier, and then threw in a diamond ore block. Once the ritual finished, every single diamond ore block was lit up. This effect was on for a pretty decent amount of time, but I was still rushing trying to grab as many diamonds as I could. I ended up mining till the next day and I got up to level 30 in mining as well. Unfortunately, the effect ran out as I was getting really close to a 4 vein and my gathering was also really close to level 30 as well. In total, I think I got more than like 22 diamonds uh, and I put all my levels into this specialization once again. I decided to come back home after a bit and grinded out more smithing levels. Then after chopping down a tree, I got my gathering to level 30 and could equip this glyph of break. Once that was done, I dug down really deep to place this dimensional plasma down. When I got to obsidian, I actually made the break spell and found out I could break obsidian with it. Once that was done, I cleared out some space, placed the plasma down, and a waste zone right behind. I came back up to mess around with Ars Nouveau, and I actually made 4 enchanting apparatuses. Which was a mistake since you only need 1. Anyways, I set up the basic enchantment area behind the farm to turn a regular seed into mage bloom seeds. I placed that mage bloom seed in the corner of the farm and used a stack of bone meal on it. Day 46 to day 47, with all that mage bloom, I made fibers to try the mage armors out. This thing actually increases your mana, but it makes you really weak, so I just stuck with a diamond armor. I thought the other versions would be stronger, so I grabbed some gold blocks and went to the nether. I spawned pretty close to my old spawn and then went down to collect that reclaimer block. I decided to just build a return portal right behind my spawn and also set a waypoint there as well. My main goal in here was to get blaze rods, but I also made sure to grab these uh, crimson warp blocks as well. With launch and night vision, I went all around the nether. I found a nether pyramid which was trapped, then a little dungeon, and finally past those two I saw a fortress. In here, I was just grinding away at these blazes. I also ended up finding a bastion ring in a chest, leveling up my endurance through a quest reward, and then I just farmed this spawner until I had close to 20 blaze rods. Since magic mirror didn't work, I had to take the long way back home. As soon as I got back, I also grabbed another brewing stand from a village, and once that was done, I found the best way to level up smithing. All you have to do is basically salvage these crimson warp blocks, which turn into nether warts, and then you can turn that back into crimson warp blocks. Doing that, I got my smithing up to level 22. I also made 6 potions of regeneration. To make these hell shelves and eventually an enchantment library, I needed nether bricks. But I did it the stupid way by cooking nether rack. I was actually able to make one at least and then place it in the corner. Eventually, I filled out one row, but now I had to go to the nether. In the nether, I found a little dungeon area which had some nether bricks and was able to make a few more hell shelves. 
Then while I was trying to come back home, I stumbled into a stalwart dungeon. The only issue here was that it was halfway underneath lava. That actually didn't stop me, so I equipped my scythe and went down below. I ended up using a bunch of cobblestone to avoid the lava, and then fought my first incomplete wither. I am kinda certain that these guys always drop wither skeleton heads. In total, I picked up 11 wither skeleton skulls and also took out these reinforced blazes, which drop even more rods. Since I was already here, I decided to grab all the tungsten in the center as well. On the way back, I ran into the fortress once again and picked up a bunch of nether bricks. After all of that, I came back home, made more potions of regen, which made more hell shelves and upgraded the entire enchantment area. Day 50 to day 51, it turned out that I needed more potions of regen, so I used up two more gas tiers. With these hell shelves, I finally had enough power to infuse the rest of the shelves. I then used whatever levels I had to enchant my helmet, boots, and the scythe. I then grabbed some potions and went to take out this airship. The first thing I did was drank the mana regen potion and then flew onto the wings. From there, I broke the phantom spawners first. With that being done and Slayer on my scythe, I actually ended up doing a lot of damage to the mobs on the ship. Eventually, I had to drink this potion of undying, but after that, this place was cleared and I could finally start looting. These chests were really good. They were packed with relics, ores, and golden carrots as well. After that, there was a the bottom floor where I broke these spawners from above. As I was trying to loot the room, I actually got attacked by a ton of mobs and I had to teleport back home. With this nether coin, I actually used it on obsidian, and then I used the copper coin on tons of random loot. Once all of that was done, I cooked up a stack of potatoes and a bunch of tungsten ore that I had as well. So with that being done, I filled up my lunchbox and went back to the airship. Now this place had no mobs and I was able to loot the chests. And the chests on the bottom floor were so much better than the ones up top. When I came back home, I made ladders going down to the storage room and then made a runic hammer and an anvil. This was all just to repair the hunter's belt and bastion ring. I also made this runic altar, but I have no clue what this was for. The next morning, I made this magnetic ring and upgraded it to a dislocation ring. I also completed some of these enigmatic legacy quests, which gave me more levels. I actually ended up needing even more levels, and to do that, I went out to explore. Of course, I went into this roguelike dungeon right in front of the place that I'd actually spawned in. This time, I was able to just breeze through. I collected everything in the chest, like these tattered tomes as well. With those tomes and these rings, I got even more quest rewards from the enigmatic legacy quest line. In the next floor, the only issue was this empty Pisa, who can still do tons of damage, but I used my spells to take care of that from far away. After that, the next floor was just as easy, but I did manage to open more buddy card packs, which completed the base set and gave me a permanent speed one bonus plus a medal. So I finally made it to the final floor where I fought a boss in the chamber and grabbed all the levels for my endurance. Also, since I had like a 30% boost for endurance skills, I leveled up two times. Once I looted this entire structure, I came home to infuse the four hell shelves I had and made a full set of tungsten armor. I even enchanted all the pieces of armor and used up this soul in this grave to scrap this diamond chest plate. Day 54 to day 55, I forgot that I could grab obsidian with my spell book, so I actually tried rolling for really good pickaxe enchants. This was all just to hopefully level up my gathering ability. Also during this, I put mana boost into my chest plate and noticed one of my enchants actually just dropped emeralds on me. Later that night, I went back to that drowned structure and there was nothing else too good in here, so I just ended up taking a lot of damage for no reason. I also found this buried treasure map and spent the whole night digging, which was a waste since I didn't even find the chests. As it started becoming morning, I found this other airship and made my way up towards it. Now this place wasn't as hard as the last one, but it was more redstone focused. I grabbed all the quartz and coal blocks and then looted all the redstone materials inside of the chests. The top floor had way more mobs and the chests were actually pretty good. Eventually, I found the last chest which had an awesome bauble which negates fall damage and a map towards a mining system. With that, I could remove the slow fall effect on my launch skill and save on mana. More importantly, I was able to run through all these biomes just following this map. I ended up fighting these sirens and attacked this pirate ship. In here, my scythe broke and I had to swap to a diamond sword. And with that, I went down to the lower parts of the ship. The chests in these ships were pretty good too. Finally, the last room left was the captain's and after taking care of that guy, I looted all the chests. 
I ended up with diamonds, some eyes of ender, and two chorus fruits. As I got closer to my destination, I actually fought a sea serpent as well. The next morning started with another sea serpent fight, but now I was actually really close to the mining system. Once I got above the marker, I dug straight down and ended up in a pretty big cave. I looked around first to see if I could find the mining system, but I ended up getting jumped by a boss mob. Once I took this dude out, I picked up the really nice boots it had, and I went into its lair, where I got more tomes and a really nice pickaxe. I ended up finding the mining system right after. Now these mobs were super strong, so I had to use my projectile break spell to get rid of all the spawners from far away. I also had to hide since they did so much damage, but because all the spawners were broken, things just started clearing up after a while. The loot in these chests were incredible. Every single chest had enchanted armor, ores, food, and relics. There were also tons of diamonds in there, and for the relics, I got these digging claws and uh, drank from this random chalice, which gave me like every single negative effect, just for a little bit. I even picked up this heart of the earth, which I turned into a charm of treasure hunter. Oh yeah, and all of this was just from one side. There was a whole other side to this mining system as well. On the other side, I picked up an obsidian skull, which I switched my belt for. Once that place emptied out, I came home to smelt all the ores I had. My tungsten armor was also almost broken, so I enchanted more diamond armor. And while doing that, I realized I could put these mob heads around the enchantment table, and that increased the quanta. So I just started trying out some weird layouts. Day 58 to 60, I changed the whole layout of the bookshelves to fit the mob heads in. This gave me 100% quanta, which makes enchants even more chaotic. I think that means I could get like really great enchants from low levels, or vice versa. For now, the only good thing I had was this new pickaxe. That night ended up being a blood moon, and all I did was clean up my storage area and defeat a single boss mob. Once it became morning, I learned that you could place glowstone to increase the recidification or something, which should help with the high chaos. With that being done, I went into the caves to level up my gathering some more, and I grabbed every single ore I possibly could. This also leveled me up quite a bit. I ended up fighting another boss mob as well and picked up this Heart of the Golem Spellstone from a zombie dungeon. I got my gathering up to level 34 from this trip and got to level 41. With those levels, I tried enchanting my diamond armor again, but didn't get anything good. Instead, I decided to get my smithing up to level 30 and I could finally salvage some of these iron level gear I had. Once that was done, I wanted to fight a mini boss. So I made this thing called a haunted bell and summoned this guy called a bell ringer. Now this dude was just like a giant vex, but the only difference is that this boss was somehow weaker. I ended up not taking much damage at all and just defeated this guy pretty easily. The boss dropped this thing called Phantoplasm, which I used to make some relic for quest rewards. I also completed a quest to make this Ectoplasm Orb. That night, I ended up taking out this Wraith, which started an undead army raid. These guys started flooding in from the north of my base, but honestly, they were not that hard at all. I took out two waves pretty easily, and the hardest part of all of that was just finding out where they spawned. I actually managed to take them all out before the night even ended. The next day, I hopped into the nether to go looking for more blazes. Once I found a fortress, I just grinded out blaze rods until I could craft a blaze gate pearl. On the way back, I actually tried taking this bastion on, but the piglets are way too strong for now. I did manage to get a lot of quest rewards though. So really quickly, I just launched myself over to the chest area and looted all these chests. In here, I got some ancient debris and a nether set of buddy cards. After that, I decided to come home to open this uh, blaze gate pearl in this swamp biome. Now this was a big mistake since fire spread was on and uh, I made it so that I could never come back to this area without the game crashing again. But for now I actually opened the portal up and started the five waves of blazes attacking. I think my obsidian skull gets rid of like 50% of fire damage or something weird like that. It didn't matter anyway and I was able to just run through all these blazes. In total I got close to 30 blaze rods after all those waves. To end these days off I wanted to level up my gathering levels once and for all. So I teleported around until I found some cave and I started mining every single thing I could. I even managed to pick up a pretty cool bauble, so I had to swap some of my old ones out. Then, finally, I realized that I could just use this break spell to grab obsidian. So with all of that, I could finally make this enchantment library, and this thing was an absolute lifesaver with all the enchanted books that I had collected. Day 63 to day 64, I made an obsidian shield, but this was mainly just to help my endurance level, so it just stayed in the backpack for now. Once that was done, I made this mage armor set for quest rewards. Then I I learned about this slot memory thing, which organized my backpack pretty nicely. After that, I made this emblem of Monster Slayer, which is supposed to make mobs drop double the XP. I was doing all of this while smelting the ores I had collected and filling up this lunchbox. 
That night I put in almost 40 levels to get to tier 3 specialization, but the armor it gave sucked and I already had the artifact which was supposed to be the reward. So now I had no levels and decided to go explore. I made my way inside this jungle structure where I fought a python and I was already getting a bunch more XP. After that I found a jungle pyramid and this place was filled to the brim with silverfish. There were so many silverfish that I actually thought I was gonna die. They all ended up falling like one block lower so I was able to loot all the chests. Once I came back out, it was morning and I ended up in a jungle fortress looking thing. This place eerily had no mobs and I ended up getting this cross necklace which actually seems really overpowered. Deeper into this jungle I found a temple which didn't have anything too good and I fought through a pillager tower as well. Since I didn't really find any good structures, I made my way inside another roguelike dungeon and I breezed through this dungeon very easily and I got up to level 40 quickly. I made my way towards the bottom floor and then fought this boss mob. The chest plate it dropped was actually pretty good so I equipped this one instead. I also ended up breaking a total of 100 spawners which gave me tons of rewards. Then I ended up breaking that new chest plate before entering the final room so I had to swap back to an older piece. This place had tons of good loot. It even had the better magic mirror which actually works across dimensions. After grabbing literally everything from this structure, I got up to level 59 and decided to come home. The first thing I did was re-enchant another set of armor. This time after some rolling and combining, I got really good enchants on each piece. I even managed to get a nice diamond sword as well. I ended these days by redeeming some of those coins. For the gold coin, I actually got a sword called Frost Slayer. The monster coin I used on XP and the copper coin I used on random loot crate rewards. Then I enchanted and put unbreaking on the Frost Slayer, but even with that, the durability was super low. I also combined two bows together and made a diamond quiver to hold all the arrows I had. Day 67 to day 68, now that I was equipped somewhat well, I wanted to take down a dragon. And of course I wanted to take down the one closest to my base. Immediately I was able to do a good amount of damage with this Frost Slayer sword. But this dragon's ice breath made it super hard for me to escape. Luckily for me, this thing just stayed on the ground and I was able to take out major chunks of its health. Eventually, this dragon flew back up, but I was able to take it out with my bow. That fight ended up being surprisingly easy and I grabbed all the loot from this dragon. I also went out to find another one that was really close. Now for this guy, I actually ate an enchanted golden apple and swapped to my diamond sword. Again, almost immediately I managed to just ruin this dragon's health. And it flew up for a bit and when it landed again, I was able to just destroy it and and grab all of the loot. After killing those two dragons, my dragon slayer level was level two, but I needed like six to be able to wear all the dragon skill gear. Then I decided to complete some ice and fire quests and also made a dragon bone sword. When I enchanted the sword, I got looting three on it, so I just kept it safe in my backpack for now. That night, I went towards some snowy areas to hopefully enter those dread dungeons, but instead, I actually found these ice castles. I jumped all the way down in one of these staircases and ended up in the bottom maze area. This place sucked though and had no loot other than the totems from these frost mancers. I got out during the morning and stayed in that snowy tundra area. Here, I ended up finding a monastery and killed a hundred skeletons. The top floor also had some really good loot as well. I ran through some other structures around here but none of them were pretty good. At night I leveled up my endurance like crazy with the quest rewards. Then I gathered these snowberries and blueberries to increase my food diversity. When I came home I planted these source berries as well but those are for mana potions. A 69 to 70 it was time to increase the difficulty. I grabbed soul sand and wither skeleton heads then I found an area to dig down to and cleared some space to summon a wither. I got very lucky that my first one wasn't enchanted. Uh, and that actually made the fight super easy. Well, I mean it was pretty easy until the first super attack this wither did. I ended up having to eat an enchanted golden apple. With that I was a lot safer and climbed back into my tunnel and doing that I did tons of damage to the wither and managed to take my first one out. Now the game is in expert mode. Here's everything that's actually changed. For some reason I couldn't get enough so I decided to take on another wither. And again, for some reason this guy was significantly easier and I took it out in no time. I needed the extra nether star for a spell book upgrade. That night I also made a set of dragon scale armor but of course I didn't reach the dragon slayer requirement. Next up I made 12 eyes of ender and while looking for this end stronghold it turns out this entire thing was really close to my base. I ended up breaking in through some jail and I picked up this essence of undeath from a zombie and also made an extra grave as well. After that I basically spent the whole day trying to find the end portal I was losing my mind. When I finally found the room I bought a waystone and placed it down. Then I came home. 
I also saw these warp plates in the shop as well, and I set up two of them, one underground and the other one on the surface. Day 71 to day 73, I started these days by grinding out smithing levels, then repaired my sword. After that, I was ready to go to the end. I placed all the eyes down and hopped in. Immediately, I flew around breaking the crystals. With that taken care of, I launched arrows until the dragon perched and then did tons of damage. In the next perch, I got the dragon's health down to a third and started collecting the dragon's breath. Finally, after all of that, I ended up defeating the ender dragon. I got up to level 81 and then also grabbed the dragon's egg as well. After that, the difficulty increased to master mode and I grabbed all the other quest rewards plus opened this loot bag which was sick. With all that done I slowly made my way towards the outer ends. My main goal here was to look for mending gear and of course find the elytra. The first end city had tons of loot in the chests. There were enchanted gear, new relics and even dragon scales. This place also had tons of tomes which gave me a lot of levels. Sadly there was no ship but uh, after stripping this place clean it was still worth it. I had to keep moving on though and the only things I was really trying to avoid were these things called ender scents. It took about a day of traveling but I finally found some structures. The first place was this uh, separated end city and the second place was an end pyramid. The chests in the pyramid were pretty incredible and right above it was a giant phantom structure which also had pretty stacked chests. None of these structures were as important as this end ship though which finally got me elytra wings. I didn't equip the elytra because I had different plans for it and then I started making my way back towards the main islands. Before ending these days I actually placed another grave down. The next day I put all the enchanted books I had into the library. Then I grabbed every tool that had mending and tried to scrap that off of them. For now I just had two mending books. Next up, I wanted to upgrade my spell book, so I made this thing called a Tablet of Summon Wilden. I went near the coast and placed this tablet into the brazier. Once the ritual finished, a Wilden Chimera spawned, and this dude's first phase wasn't too bad, but it turns out that there are multiple phases, and uh, this one just happened to break a bunch of blocks. At the same time, my armor pieces were breaking, so I had to retreat a little bit. I actually thought that the boss was dead the second time I got its health down, but it was going to phase three. I ended up having to retreat one more time, and after restocking, I was able to take this dude out, finally. My reward was a Wilden Tribute, and with that, plus a Nether Star, I could now access tier three glyphs with this spellbook. Really quickly, I re-enchanted my armors again and then made a glyph of Amplify 2, which launched me even farther. Before the night ended, I made an Ender Buddy card binder and filled all that up with the packs that I had collected. Once that was done, I drank a potion of mana regen and basically flew all over this entire snowy tundra biome. I was actually going to a fire dragon's nest that I saw on my map, and while making my way there, I was actually fighting the Cyclops as well. Now this dude was just annoyingly tanky, so I switched to my spells to save arrows. After doing that, I took the Cyclops clops out and made my way towards the dragon's nest. Immediately I ate a golden apple and while looking for a potion to drink this dragon actually saw me and attacked. I was able to slash down more than a half of its health but then I played it safe and teleported back home to gather myself when uh, it started attacking back. This actually ended up working even better since I was able to get really good enchants on my sword and with this new sword I went back to attack the dragon just as it was waking back up. That ended up taking the dragon out and I grabbed all of its scales. Before the night ended, I used these monster coins on endurance levels and made these dragon eyes to help me find bigger dragons. The next morning, I actually followed the ice dragon eye and when I dug down to where it was pointing, it was right on top of a tier 4 or tier 5 dragon's nest. For now, I just set a marker down and came back home. Here in my farm, I decided to make another row of potatoes and then fill up my lunch box. After that, I made 15 end shelves, and with these, I could get enchants worth up to 80 levels. Day 77 to day 78, I made a set of sapphire armor and rolled enchants for those as well. I actually had to keep re-enchanting this chest plate, but eventually, this new set of armor was pretty good. So I went out to explore some more. I was back in that snowy tundra biome and ended up finding an enchanted frost moth. It didn't matter though, since I had no issue taking it out. Later that night, I ran through another roguelike dungeon again. These dungeons were so easy now, I just breezed through each floor. I eventually found one of those trapped ore structures. After dismantling the thing, I grabbed all of the rare ores in there. Eventually, I got to the final room, and because I had the break spell, I was able to just clear this floor in no time. I even took out a boss mob really easily. Once I grabbed all the loot, I came back home. Turns out I had tons of raw meat, and I cooked all those up to keep in my lunchbox to increase my food diversity. While waiting for that, I used this soul to uh, disenchant a chest plate, and then put those books in the library. Then I made another tablet of scrying and grabbed one of those ancient debris that I had. I went into the nether, found a safe area and started digging down to ancient debris level. Once I was here, I did the ritual and threw in that ancient debris. After that, I had 5 minutes of ancient debris being highlighted. 
at first I thought I messed up because I only had an iron pickaxe, but it turned out that the break spell works just as well. Of course, just like last time I was rushing, but it, I actually noticed this vain goblin trader who had a really good trade for these ancient debris. I think this got me two extra netherite scrap. I kept moving along though, and once the effect ended, I had 13 ancient debris plus 10 netherite scrap. On the way home, I picked up two nether coins and used them on gas tiers. Oh yeah, I also swapped to the other magic mirror, which got me out of the nether. The only issue is that this thing kind of glitches out your levels. Before cooking those ancient debris, I made a blank portal key, three gilded portal blocks, and one portal keystone. With those, I built this random portal that I had no clue how to use. The next day, I learned how to activate those blank keys, and I used them on an end portal block. Once I came back, I put the key into the portal, and it opened a portal to a gold dungeon. So I hopped into the portal and I got teleported to a place with tons of rooms that had puzzles in them. For this one, I just had to wait for the ice to melt. It actually didn't matter and I was able to reach the chest anyway. And inside of it was a mending book. Most of these rooms were very easy puzzles, but the chest kind of sucked. There were only like three chests that were good here. One had a key for a nether dungeon. The other one had an efficiency five book. And the last room had like a nice set of boots. Before deciding to leave, I ended up killing a zombie who dropped another key. And I also found a key inscribing station in one of the chests. I even fought this vindicator in one last room and got the chest in here. Let me know if I missed any other room in the comments. I quickly came back home and placed this inscribing station down then I put all the books I got into the library as well after that I hopped into this nether dungeon and this one was worse there were more puzzles and less chests I did however kill 50 blazes which was nice I spent a good amount of time in here and really got nothing good since I had another nether dungeon key I decided to try again and was way more diligent even then I really didn't find any other chests, so I'm probably missing something I called it quits on the dungeon delving and re-enchanted my chest plate which was actually really good now after that, I made my way towards that desert biome, and along the way, I fought this monster box in a mine shaft and a sea serpent. As soon as I made it to the desert, I found this cool structure, which I jumped down into, and then immediately found the loot room. These chests were actually pretty good, though. The rest of the night, I fought a cyclops, which I pushed out of its house, and then I took out a giant death worm. Day 82, I found a village where I picked up this horn statue, but this one was cursed, so it didn't take the spirit orbs. After that, I activated the village's waystone and found a Miramex nest. In here, I took out the queen, but all of the loot sucked, so I resurfaced. As I was flying around, I found a pillager's tower, and while fighting these dudes, my helmet broke. Once the top floor was cleared, I gathered these giant dragon bones next to him, and then started making my way down the ladder. There were tons of pillagers down there, and they actually did a bunch of damage to me, but I ended up surviving and took them all out. The chests in the bottom were actually really good too. Then once again, while flying around, I found a pirate ship, which also had really good chests. But on top of that, it had an even better treasure room. Once I looted that pirate ship, I found another really cool bone structure looking thing. And this place also had tons of emeralds in it. Finally, I came home to put all the books away and collect my quest rewards. Since I now had a 40% boost to my endurance XP, I got up to level 60 endurance now. After that, because I had a ton of levels, I put protection on my helmet and chest plate. I also used the unbreaking books on the other pieces as well. With that being done, I actually tried to take on that huge ice dragon. I quickly broke into the nest to get a good view of this absolute beast. I also had drunk this uh, potion of bear as well. Almost immediately, I jumped down and started hitting this dragon as much as I could. I ended up doing a ton of damage to the dragon, but eventually the dragon's breath started freezing me up and I started almost dying, so I had to magic mirror my way out of there. So instead, I decided to take on smaller dragons for now to level up my dragon slaying, and I actually used this fire dragon's eye around the savanna and desert biomes. For some reason, the eye would work sometimes, and then sometimes it'll tell me it didn't find anything. Either way, I couldn't find another fire dragon the whole day. Instead, I came home to make netherite armor. I put the dragon scale gear on an armor stand. I kept the netherite gear in my backpack until I could strip the enchants off of my sapphire set. Since I was going to start putting mending on my gear, I also made an experience upgrade for my backpack and then a tank upgrade. After that, I made a diamond stack upgrade, which held even more experience as well. I made sure to constantly have 30 levels and then set all the experience to go to my mending tools. Day 84 to day 86, since I was waiting for the grave to collect some souls, I leveled up my smithing too. Once that was done, I extracted some affixes and made a chest for them. Then to complete some more quests, I made this catalyst thing. Since I was already waiting, I decided to add a row of chests to the storage system. And as soon as that was finished, I made a portal to the undergarden dimension and lit it up using the catalyst. I actually spent the rest of the night just grinding smithing levels until the morning when I got it to level 40. 
With that done, I went into the Undergarden to see what was up. For the quests, I just needed to collect Undergarden versions of Iron, Gold, and Diamond. These were actually on the ceiling, but I didn't know that yet and just kept looking down below. As I moved forward, I fought a Rotling and a Rotwalker. Then I ended up fighting a fish called a Sploogy and met a Stoneborn Trader. Finally, I found out that Iron spawns at Y equals 175, so I started making my way up. In this gigantic area, I found tons of ore that I needed. With my break spell, I grabbed everything I could. This ended up completing all the mainline quests and I was able to come back home with a bunch of XP. On day 87, I forgot to record myself actually building this a tomb portal, but it was just sandstone laid up like this with a pool of water in the center. Then all you had to do was just throw a scarab into the pool. I quickly decorated it with stone brick stairs and then decided to extend my spruce fence all the way behind this portal. I scattered mage light all around the base and moved the undergarden portal right next to the tomb portal as well. Before the night ended, I actually moved my enchanting apparatus all the way back as well. Day 88 to day 89, since I had space, I moved the graves into my base and then repaired my sapphire armor. With that done, I hopped into the Atum dimension and looked for a pyramid. Since I already had collected Nebu ingots from a quest reward, I had like 6 Nebu torches already. I broke into the pyramid and lit the top floor up. Then I went down through the maze into the boss area. After clearing out all the side rooms, I had the 4 torches on the sides lit up and summoned a pharaoh. Now I think my sword didn't have any spite on it, that's why it wasn't doing a lot of damage. So uh, this pharaoh was actually super tanky to me. I actually had to hide behind this doorway and just take pot shots. Once the pharaoh started making its way out, I was able to take it out and then for some reason another one spawned right on top and this guy was even stronger. At least now, I was able to break the blocks, so I created some separation. As if things couldn't get worse, another pharaoh spawned right after I killed this one. So I just went behind another room and I kept hitting this pharaoh through a hole in the wall. This one was the strongest I faced, but I did manage to take it out. As soon as I was done, I flew far away and grabbed all of my quest rewards. After that, I decided to explore all the structures around this area and then put a bunch of levels into the backpack. Since I killed a ton of undead mobs, I was able to make another grave and put that down to my base as well. After all of that, I started scrapping enchants off of some of the sapphire gear and then prayed for souls so that I could disenchant my chest plate. Then I was able to make a protection 4, unbreaking 3, and mending netherite helmet. Later that night, I got very lucky and stripped tons of enchants off of the sapphire chest plate. Finally, I was able to make a super stacked netherite chest plate. Day 90 to day 91, I learned that you could chop up these buddy cards to get this uh, buddy steel blend and then smelted that to get buddy steel ingots. With those ingots, I made a buddy steel vault, but that basically overrode my binder and I lost all the cards that I had been collecting. I still had the speed effect though, so it didn't really matter. Later that day, I made a netherite tower shield and camped around this dread dungeon hoping a lich would spawn, but I think the whole thing was bugged. Then in the morning, I defeated a pillager tower which gave me the bad omen effect. Past that, I found a ruined portal that had a ghost skin talisman. Now this thing is super overpowered because it makes projectiles go through you, but I had to get rid of my obsidian skull since you need to uh, equip a belt to be able to hold talismans. Later that night, I ended up in that castle which was abandoned aside from one legendary skeleton in the dungeon room. Then the rest of the night I actually spent fighting through these spiders in this spider cave. Day 92 to day 93, I enchanted the ghost skin talisman and then went into the end dimension to look for more armor pieces. I ended up getting inside a bunch of these structures and grabbed all the armor pieces that had mending or protection. Mostly, yeah. I also fought this ender scent who was actually kind of tough. I was just paranoid that I would get uh, teleported elsewhere. I ended up finding a few more structures with cool armor pieces and then came home to scrap them for enchants. With that, I got new leggings which had protection 3, unbreaking 3, mana regen 2, and mending. For the boots, I got protection 4, unbreaking 3, and mending. With all the base enchants done, I scattered these mana regen and mana boost books into everything else. Last but not least was this dragon bone sword which I was able to get like sharpness 5, unbreaking 3, mending, and some really cool sounding enchants like sage's blessing and Ares grace. Day 94 to day 95, I used my elytra wing and this mythical clay to make a glyph of gliding. I added that onto my launch skill and now I could glide after every launch. After that I put looting 3 on my dragon bone sword and went out to take on that giant ice dragon. This time the dragon barely did any damage and I was able to just start chopping it down. Once once this dragon died, I looted the corpse and got tons of scales plus an ice dragon egg. Since I had so much raw beef already, I was also able to make a ton of dragon meal. 
As soon as I got back, I put the ice dragon egg in water and equipped this dragon skill armor as a cosmetic since I just like the look more than netherite. I also had 30 copper coins which I spammed on these random loot crate rewards that filled my inventory up with a bunch of random stuff but now I was able to make more dragon meals though. As soon as my dragon hatched, I got it to be rideable which was like stage 3 immediately and this actually broke a few blocks in my base. I put it back in the horn for now. Once that was done, I made this thing called a fossil bait which summons a boss and went to a random island to fight it. This boss was called a swamp jay and it was super easy to take out. Honestly, it only took like a few arrows and this thing was already dead. To get quest rewards, I also made this thing called a caged heart and then summoned another boss. Now this guy was called Dame Fortuna and it was a little bit stronger but that's not saying much. It was still super weak and I easily dismantled this dude. Later that day, I went around these hotter biomes and used my fire dragon eye which actually ended up breaking. I did get super lucky though and landed on a lightning dragon's nest. This dragon was super small so the fight was super quick and I got my dragon slayer ability to level 4. After that I decided to come home and make another diamond stack upgrade for my backpack. Then I enchanted these hell shelves so I could make a shelf of sight. Day 96 to day 98 I went into the nether to take down a bastion and this place was actually kind of a challenge. The loot was really nice and once I looted everything I actually tried to go to the stalwart dungeon to grab more wither skeleton skulls. I then checked my inventory and saw that I already had 12 so I just came home. As soon as I came home I went back to the original place where I summoned a wither and started fighting another one. Now this dude was enchanted but there wasn't a single time where I was afraid of my health anymore. This fight actually took forever since I didn't have smite. Either way I managed to take it out and with these nether stars you could get diamond coins and with those diamond coins you could get a sick artifact of your choice. I already had one piece of the onk charm so I used all of these nether stars to fill the entire onk charm requirement out. The first thing I did was get this black dragon scale and luckily this one grants immunity to the wither effect. I then took down the next wither and used that star on a bazaar. Quickly I made a pit stop into the nether to get extra wither skeleton heads and then fought the next wither. For this one I grabbed the forbidden fruit. I then took out another wither and used this star for vitamins. The one after that was also enchanted which just meant it took a very long time and with this star I got a shulker heart. One more to go. Finally I got the ring of overclocking as well. All that remained was just combining some of them. I already combined the bazaar and the dragon scale and and just like that, after the combining the last two, I got the Onk Charm. This thing makes me immune to most negative status effects. Day 99 to day 100, I had to quickly go to the end to grab these rose crystals. And with that, I was able to craft four end crystals. So I resummoned the Ender Dragon, and for some reason, the pillars glitched and spawned on top of each other, which was super annoying. That ended up not mattering though, and I broke all the crystals, even the ones that were hidden inside some of the other ones. The whole time, I was still doing a good amount of damage to this guy with my bow. A few purchases later, I demolished the Ender Dragon for a second time. Then finally to end these days off I made a beacon block, upgraded to a diamond paxel and placed a two layer beacon down right inside my base. I decorated it, covered it and gave myself resistance 1. If you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and let me know if you want 200 days.